So hi, is your empty nest season closer than you think? Um, it, it comes like overnight, suddenly. You've been raising kids for years and doing all the things for your kids and that's all you can focus on and suddenly they're gone. So I wanna help you prepare your empty, to be an empty nester, to avoid the anxiety and make the transition smoother. And because I've already gone through this transition, I thought that maybe I should, should do a, a series on this to help you. So as a season of motherhood shifts, it's natural to feel both anticipation and uncertainty about the empty nest. And I hope that these tips I'm sharing today will really help you. Some of us feel this more than others. And some of us are more prepared for the shift. And some of us, by the time we get closer and closer to that point where we're gonna shift into the empty nest season, our marriage is really struggling because we've been focusing on our children for all these years. And maybe some of our kids, while they were teenagers, were difficult and we had to focus on that and we neglected our relationship with our husbands. Some of us, not me, but some of you um, might have had a divorce happen because of all this. And others, if you, not because of this, but you might have lost a spouse and doing, be doing this, and entering this season by your own self. And it can be really challenging for different reasons. And so I just want to encourage you as you enter this time of your life. And um, this season can be a beautiful opportunity to rediscover who you are beyond the roles that you play for your children and your family. And it's gonna be a season where, it's called the empty nest for a reason, where all of a sudden your children and your reasons for living are gone. They're not gone, I mean, but they have a new life and they don't want mom um, hovering over them quite as much. And so it really helps them if we become busy in our own ho hobbies and new activities. So I wanna offer you some practical tips with grace-filled steps to prepare your heart and home for this next chapter. So whether you're looking to rekindle old passions and activities and or desires you never were able to do all those years, I wanna help you with this. And I wanna help you embrace the quiet space you'll now have and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. And these tips will help you approach this change with faith, with hope, and purpose. So let's walk this journey together, trusting God's perfect plan for it. So recently I shared another video about the empty nest and how to embrace the usefulness that you can have during the season. So you can go back and watch that. And if you are in the stage of life, it's better to find new directions sooner than later. So only one life will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last. This is from C.T. Studd, and I really have liked this quote for a long time. So, if you're busy enjoying each moment of your children's lives, you might suddenly wake up to an empty nest because you didn't pay attention to the changes coming. And, you know, I was changing diapers endlessly, and you feel like that season will not ever end. And suddenly they're in their teen years and then they're grown and then they're gone. With my kids, my oldest stayed until he was 28. And once he left, it was like a suction where the others, all of them left within three and a half years. And the younger ones, well, somehow in my mind, I thought they would stay until their late 20s because he did, but that wasn't so. They, they left earlier and for really good reasons. And so I had the, um, just the liberty to let them go in my own spirit so that it was okay with me. So there's different things you can do to prepare for your emptiness. I'm not saying I did these because I didn't know better, but since I've already gone through the season, I thought maybe I could help you. So when my kids were little, the empty nest years, like I said, seem years away. So you might have your empty nest years not anywhere near you, but if you happen to be listening to this video, you can do things right now to build your relationship with your husband, keep that strong, and to not let that go into a bad 
place before those years because it's much, much harder if it was really hard for me. And so that we have are in a real good space right now, my husband and I, but I had to work on that really, really hard and really undo a lot of damage that had been done and not blaming it on anybody, it just happened. I homeschooled my kids for about 25 years and I was consumed with planning and teaching them day in and day out. And it didn't come without its, its struggles. Those days were real, but you kind of get lost into them and it's so intense that you kind of don't think of what it's gonna be like the day they set off for college or for a new job or they get married. Different reasons why they live home live at home maybe a little longer or maybe leave earlier than than some kids and so what can you do um, here are some practical ways that you can prepare uh, preparing for the empty nest can be both exciting and it can be challenging it's a season of change and it's scary and you can enter it with intentional prayer that helps and it can be a time of renewal for yourself in the Lord and also discovery of who you are. You got lost in your kids. Your identity became you as a mom and not you as an individual anymore. So here are some practical and spiritual steps to prepare for this transition. Spend time with God in his word every day. Don't forget to pray. Date your husband. He, um, it was kind of a joke, but I used to make pea soup and I used to love it. And then I discovered one day my husband didn't care for it. So I would make it and then the kids would all like, it would be a setup where it'd be, oh, like dad, take mom out. And he would willingly go. And that was when a lot of them were teenagers. So date your husband, renew the extended family ties if that's possible. Keep them strong because you're gonna need like maybe your sister-in-law. My sister-in-law is very dear to me and we text often. We see each other every couple months and so renew your extended family ties and volunteer at church or in your community. Do something that's outside. I, I remember when I first became an empty nester 10 years ago, I couldn't think of what I could do out in the community or in my church or anything. And I don't still do anything in the community, community but I do help with the little, little kids that um, in Sunday school at our church. Um, another thing you can do is start exercising. And if you weren't consistent because you had all these things to do with your kids, it becomes more and more port important as you're an empty nester. And it also helps to boost your, your mood even if you're not going to worry about losing weight, that's not the point. I'm encouraging you to do that, to exercise and work out because if you're kind of down because the kids left, exercising not only gives you something to do, but it kind of like boosts your mood. So don't neglect your emotional well-being either. Um, do things to help that. I go to a coffee shop now and then. I went today. I was out. I didn't go special to the coffee shop, but because I was out, after I was done with my two appointments, I went to the coffee shop and just spent some time with myself and reading a book and thinking and yeah, declutter your home. There's lots of declutter after the kids leave. They don't take all their things. They don't take all their junk. They don't want it. They, they're on to uh, like getting married, a job, college, whatever, and their life is different. And you can redecorate. I've repurposed some of the bedrooms as they obviously weren't coming back, some of them. And um, join a Bible study or create a Bible study. I do Bible studies for myself. I do them through my blog and provide that. Um, take an online or in-purpose course. I've done CPR in person. I have taken um, exercise courses and become certified in that. I also have taken... Um, classes online that teach me how to do different aspects of blogging and the technical stuff and those kind of things um, help help you and don't forget to rest so by preparing for the season with purpose and grace you can enter it with joy and and anticipation and 
Although an empty nest looks different, you're going to like it. And you can prepare for the empty nest in these ways. And you can read my blog post about it. You can watch this to help you and encourage you so you can have a happy marriage after your nest empties and just all these things will help you. I give suggestions in my blog post. You might want to read that too because there's links to things like some, some blog posts that will help strengthen your marriage and just different things that will be helpful. There is a, there's, um, a Bible journaling picture that will encourage you and just all the things. Another video is in that one from that you'll catch. You can catch the YouTube video from the other um, empty nest video I did. All right, so that's all I have to share today. And thank you for listening and watching this. And I would love it if you liked this video, left me a comment and shared it and, and followed me. So those are all the things.